I came on the glider on the parachutes, but I came on the glider and I landed about one o'clock and uh, there was no Germans, no opposition. There were 21 of us. The captain from the bin said, I can't find old my men because they had parachuted, you see, and the second battalion is ready to move off to arm them. Captain Geller said, all my men are here. He said, we, we, we'll go in your place if you want. That's how I come to go to Arnhem. We followed the river from, from the landing zone. But when I got to Arnhem, it was dark. And I don't know why, but I, I, was, I was on my own. There was a Jerry looking at me just from the corner. So he, he says, are we? He cleared off. I never, I never thought to shout him. I stood there and I heard this chonk, 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 chonk coming up. And I said, oh, I thought that, that's, a, that's a badge coming. And when it got up to me, it was full of, full of Germans, wasn't it? And they were all bloody shouting at me. So I ran like hell. They, they were firing all the time. And I, I, jumped, I jumped up, up the wall. My tin up, I hadn't got it fastened, and I dropped my tin up, so I finished the rest, rest of the battle in, in, without a tin up. When I got over the wall, the, the machine gun was still, was still firing, so I, I dropped down. I was laid there with, with three Germans. They were, they were laid there as well. And anyway, somebody took the machine gun out, and we, we got up, and the Germans went, they, they run one way and I run the other. When I went down the street, there was a tram on fire, tram blazing. And I, I opened the door and it was the police station. There was bunk beds in the police station and I was dog tired, so I thought I'll have a sleep. So I, I, I had a couple of hours keep on the, on, <laughs> in the police station on my own. And then when I went outside again, I got some of our blokes. So I was a Lance Corporal, you see, so I, I took charge. And I said, we'll, we'll go into this building which was a, a government office. I thought, we've got to have somebody on guard in the door. So I said to a kid called Evans, you stop here, behind that van. He said, what the hell, what, on my own? I said, yeah, of course on your own. You'll be all right if you've got a baton in front of you. <laughs> oh, I never saw him again. Then I went upstairs, and that was, it was, this building was next to the church. And I went, up, went upstairs, there was bullets lying all over, there was ricocheting off the, it was all, it was all tarred and there was ricocheting all over the place. And I had the camouflage net round my neck and it lodged in the back of my net. It, it, it was it, it spent like, it was harmless. George, he was up in the, in, the, in the false road and he come down the stairs and he went to the toilet. And when he, when he come up to the toilet, he left the bloody door wide open, didn't he? And it was half up the stairs and this, this this Jerry Sniper he shot him up the rear. We were stuck in this government building with, with no food and with no water. So we, we, brought, we brought the valves off the radiators and we drank the water out the radiators. We were there for four days. The Germans were all around us, set, set all the houses on, on fire around us. There were only three of us left then. So I, I said to these, these other two, I said, I think we, we better, better surrender because we, we had to cut in other chance of getting out. I, I picked my rifle up and I went downstairs and I, I jumped over the garden wall and I dropped my rifle and so I, I went back for my rifle. I took the bolt that way and I, and I, 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 took, I took the rest of the rifle that way. I, I just got rid of them. And I just walked down the passage with my hands up. It was full of jerrys. They were going down the passages with the machine guns just in case anybody was there. But fortunately, we beat them to it. I was captured then, you see. When, when I met this bloke on the corner, all he said was, are we? Lay down. And I, I lay down on the pavement. And I said, are we? He said, oh, do you speak French? I said, no, and he gave me a bloody great kick in the ribs. <laughs> and then they, they took us to the music serum in, in Arnhem until the next morning. But they didn't give us anything to eat. Not to drink. The marches from Arnhem to Appledome. There was an apple orchard and there were still some apples on the tree so I, I got an apple and ate it because I was absolutely bloody starving. I went to Limburg to start with 
to Salag 9A, we was in big marquees. Everything was wet through. It was on it. But this time we was in our stocking feet with no boots. We was there for about uh, a fortnight. Russian prisoners there, and they they were clawing up the fences for something to eat. But we we, we couldn't go. We, we had nothing to give them. I lost four and a half stone in nine months. What I was thinking about was uh, how can I escape? Pulled into Frankfurt. They opened the doors. Platforms were full of Germans waiting for the train to, to go home. And the German Red Cross, they, they were there. And they, they sent us some, some bowls of soup. Well, all the soup was, it was their black bread with boiling water poured over it. But it was like just manna from heaven. I'm not kidding you. I was in Stalag 4B and I still hadn't got any, any boats. I was working with an auto electrician called Fritz Yittich. And he asked me if I'd go back after the war and marry his daughter. He used to bring me two little, two little boiled tastes like that, the, the trips, in, in the morning, you know. And he used to put them in my locker, because I'd be out my own tea, tea, tea lock with, with a locker with tools in. And he used to say, phew, Gestapo, Gestapo. Frightened death of the Gestapo. I said, I'm not frightened of the fucking Gestapo. <laughs> There only was one, one German, the tramway repair depot, and he says, oh, we'll, we'll, we shall push you back into the sea, you know. And I used to say to him, don't talk so bloody daft, you know. <laughs> All these panzer wallers, they, they used to come on the night and sit talking to us. They were, they were only, only young fellas the same as us. And they used to say, we, we're going to the Russian front, which, which was curtains for them. And they said, we want to go to the Western Front and get captured by the Americans. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that was their attitude. I was there until, until the bomb did. The, the, bomb, the, the bomb dredged them with a thousand bombers. The morning after the bombing, we were all in, in, in the tramway depot waiting to see what we were going to do. And a, a, a now ranking Luftwaffe officer came in. And uh, he said to the sergeant major who was in charge of the guard, he said, uh, I, I, want, I, want some, I want some men. He said, all my house is being destroyed. My family is all being killed. And I want some men to salvage some property. And Tilky White, who was sat in the corner of the second battalion, he sat to grin. And this, this, this bloke, he just, this Luftwaffe just went across and stuck his, his lugger in his ribs. They're going to shoot him, and the German sergeant major, he just smacked him in the back of his hand, right, right across his top, like that. They took us out, out of Dresden. There only was 20 of us in the, what they call the working commando. The first night we stopped in a farm, and I decided to walk off. So I just, I just walked away. And this Jerry said, come back, I shall shoot. I said, well, fucking shoot then. You know, I, I, didn't, I couldn't care less. So we escaped. Got through the field and we, we, we laid up while it was dark, and then we got recaptured again by the by the German armed guard. They gave us a good supper, because one of the blokes that captured us, he'd been a prisoner of war in in Britain, in the first war, so he knew what it was. Then they gave us a loaf of bread apiece, and then the next morning they took us back to the farm, and the German sergeant major he took the bread off us as punishment. I walked all the way to Czechoslovakia when I escaped. On, on these flat bits of wood with a piece of uh, carpet nailed over the top. He said, we, we, can't, we can't take any further. He said, you have to get out there. Well, of course, we got out and they didn't want to know us. Like, it was, a, it was a, a medical place. They didn't want to know us. It's still still hanging about. And I saw the quarter landing in the field. And by the time I got there, it had taken off again. So I lived for four days in the control tower on grub which strolled off the Yanks. And then a, a, a C-47 had come in. And uh, they went over to the, they said to the pilot, uh, where are you going? He said, we're going to Reims. He said, can we have a lift? He said, yeah, we're up in. So we got a lift to Reims. <laughs> and it uh, was back in the army. And, yeah, they come home in a Lancaster bomber. That was it. That was a condensed version of it, anyhow. <laughs>